Hello and welcome to this Kogi Engine tutorial. I'm Renault from Our Mountains and today I'm going to show you some of the new stuff in version 5.1. Uh, I'll start with how to switch your character or character model at runtime. Uh, then we'll see how we can follow a path using one of our characters. And then some of the new stuff like uh, how you can rotate your character instead of flipping it. Um, how you can better stick to slopes now and how you can have more than one weapon equipped at a time. So one of the main new features of version 5.1 is the ability to change your character's model or your character's prefab at runtime. So right now I am in a scene called minimal model switch and if I press the P key you'll see that my character becomes another character. Uh, in this scene, it's using the character switch model ability and this one only switches the model, which means that my characters remain in the scene. It's only one character with different models on it and uh, think of it like different clothes. So it keeps the same abilities and the same uh, powers, whatever the model, but it can be great, uh, you know, if your character changes closes, gets a new armor, that kind of stuff. Um, the way it works is quite simple. So if I select my scene, um, all I need is a prefab playable character. So I have this um, in my level manager here, I have set the playable character to be the rectangle switch model character, which is here. And as you can see, it has an ability here called character switch model. And this one uh, contains an array of character models. This one has three and uh, there's a, the way it's built is I have my top level here with all the logic and the abilities, the collider, the controller and so on. And nested under it, I have my rectangle model, but also a Corgi sprite sheet model and a retro Corgi model. All of these are simply made of a sprite renderer and an animator, but they could as well be uh, a 3D model, that kind of stuff, a spine, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, the only important thing would be to nest it and make sure the animator is at this second level of hierarchy. Um, so you just, you just put them here, you bind them uh, by simply dragging them like that. Uh, I can also decide that my next character in line would be sequential. In this case, it would go rectangle, corgi, retro corgi, rectangle, and so on. Or I can have it be random, in which case it's gonna pick a new model every time I press the uh, switch model button. And of course, right now in the demo, it's bound to a keyboard uh, or, or joypad, uh, key, but you could have it uh, change model when maybe entering a certain zone and so on, because all these are public methods. Um, automatically, you can bind the animator. That's why it's important to have the animator at this top level um, of the model. And you can have visual effects and sounds as well. So that's one way uh, to do things, and it's really fine if you just uh, want to change the appearance of your character. They remain, you know, with the same abilities, the same stats, but maybe uh, you're after something more and you have this weak character that can turn into the Hulk. Uh, and for that, you'll need to be able to switch the prefab. And well, luckily, there's also a demo for that. So uh, in this scene, if I press play, I have my um, rectangle prefab, and if I press P, now I'm a pig, now I'm a helicopter that can fly, and now I'm a corgi, and I'm a rectangle again, and I'm a copter again that can shoot, and this guy can shoot like that, and this guy doesn't even shoot, he's got like this weird weapon, and this guy can shoot. All right, so I just switched to really different prefabs. And um, what's cool is that the camera still works, the, you don't get any errors, uh, obviously, and everything's just handy. 
And the way it works, uh, this one is a bit different, but it's sort of the same logic. Uh, this one will require you to use the character switch manager. So it's a class that you put on an empty object in your scene. And then from there, you'll define uh, an array of prefabs like uh, like so. So you, you set size and then you just bind some prefabs to it. And uh, I just used, you know, prefabs that are available in other demos. Uh, like for the model version, you can define the, the order, the current index and the visual effect. So these are the two ways you can switch your character at runtime. Um, I'm pretty confident it covers most use cases. Um, remember that right now it's bound to a key, but you could have it uh, when picking uh, an item. You could have it run when you know any event happens. It's really up to you, um, and I think it should allow for new new gameplay mechanics in your game. So now I'm going to show you something else. I'm now in the retro AI demo scene, uh, where I want to show you some of the new behaviors you can put on your enemies for them to move a longer path. So there's two ways to do it now. Uh, the first one is really close to the moving platforms. So if you've ever worked with moving platforms, you'll find yourself at home. Uh, I'm looking at this guy right now, the one uh, in the top left corner. So as you can see, it's following uh, a path, moving from one node to the other along a path. Uh, and it's doing so using the new character follow path ability. So on this ability, I can change the speed of the follow. Uh, it's extremely robust, so you can go to super high speed or super slow ones. Uh, you can, of course, uh, decide whether or not you know the thing is following the path. And uh, it works in conjunction with an MM path movement component, which is the same as on moving platforms. So uh, you can decide what your cycle options are. So you can make it looping or back and forth or only once. Uh, the order of the points and of course you can define the amount of uh, path elements you have so uh, I can make five and you know add some more points like so and rearrange them and I can even do it at runtime that background is a bit hard on the eyes um, and if I increase my speed to 50. You can see that even at runtime, I can rearrange the points and my little dude will follow them. So um, that's really cool. If your enemy um, is just doing that, so maybe it's an obstacle, maybe it's uh, something that will continuously loop and you don't want to bother with collisions and that kind of stuff. However, if you want to um, make it more of a behavior for an AI, then uh, I've also got something for you. So uh, if we look at this guy now, uh, this guy has is equipped with the AI brain. So um, the one on the left doesn't require a brain, it's just an ability, it's gonna move along the path and that's it. If you want to maybe have it fly and then do something else, then you're going to require a different way of doing it. And for that, there's the AI action fly control, fly patrol, sorry. Um, and the way this one works is it also it works with an MM pass, which is a bit uh, different version of the MM path movement. So the MM pass is just the, the definition of the path. Uh, there's no notion of logic in it. Um, it's just or, or speed or whatever. So it's just the path. So um, right now I have three elements in my path. I can make it maybe five, uh, just like so. And my little dude is gonna try to fly towards the next path. So if at runtime I move it, uh, it's gonna take some adjustment because it needs to, uh, it, it caches the position. So uh, careful when you move it at runtime. You can you can move it as long as it's not already um, on that particular segment. And so really what it does is in its action AI action fly patrol, uh, it's gonna move towards the next 
uh, item in the past, uh, the next node, once it reaches it, it goes to the next one. The cool thing with that is it still works with collisions. So if I move uh, my object, my node here, you see that I collide with this yellow platform and I turn around. And that's really nice because that way, if you have maybe a moving platform that, that goes in the way or that kind of stuff, uh, your character will be able to take a decision and move in the other way. Which won't be the case if you use uh, the simple, you know, moving platform like behavior. So that these are two new ways uh, you can have your enemy follow a path. Uh, you will need on on the right side uh, if you want to use the AI action fly patrol. Of course, you'll need the character fly ability on it, uh, which is nice because that way you can also control the, the speed of it. Don't make it too, if if you make it too. Uh, too big, you'll need to adjust the minimum distance to go here because otherwise you get that, that glitchy feeling. Um, so yeah, two new behaviors. Another new feature in version 5.1 is the ability to have your character rotate when you flip direction. Uh, until now, you your characters would only flip their scale on the uh, y-axis, x-axis. So um, uh, the, the flip would be instant. But now you can have it change rotation, which was mean, which means that um, a weapon that was equipped in the right hand remains in the right hand, that kind of stuff. And uh, it's done super simply um, in the character inspector here. You'll see that you now have checkboxes, so you can have your model flip that would use the scale like so, or you can have it rotate. And if it rotates, you can define uh, the rotation vector that you prefer and you can decide on rotation speed as well. And if I increase it, you'll see that I get something much more snappy. And uh, don't worry about your character getting stuck in a weird state. It's extremely fast and uh, it will always remember the right direction you're in. And what's great about this rotation feature is that it not only works in 3D, but also in 2D. So uh, let's um, have a look. I'm going to bring my character here. So uh, I have my little piggy here, and not only does it flip, but it also, um, you know, follows the slope orientation and rotates. So um, this is all super easy to do, but it will require a different hierarchy. Uh, so you can look at the spine space pig prefab for reference. So I have my top level here with all the character colliders, rigid body, that's that logic layer. Uh, under it, I have a slope orientation object. It's an empty object. And uh, this slope orientation object will be bound to the object to rotate in the character slope orientation script. So um, the slope orientation, it, it sort of rotates this, uh, this object here. And then I have a model container below it that contains, you know, my, my spine setup, so uh, all sorts of different things. If I if I go into scene view, you'll see that, you know, I have my arms and so on. And uh, that model container also contains the animator. And this will be set as the character's character model here. And that way it allows for this sort of double rotation. The slope orientation will rotate uh, like so to move along the slope while the model container will rotate on its y-axis to flip and if you do that uh, you can have you know this this complex well, relatively complex behavior of having your character move along a slope while flipping on itself which is great of course for uh, 2d or 3d characters and it gives you this nice, in 2D, it gives you this nice um, Paper Mario feel, which is really cool. Uh, while we're with our little pig that can, you know, stick to slopes, um, I'm going to show you how the new version handles pigs. Uh, previously, you would sometimes get your character ejected in the air when walking on slopes like that, and it would jump like so. and as you can see now, it doesn't. And you can get this really, really slick behavior of sticking to slopes. 
and it's only one checkbox. So if I select my space big here, prefab, I have my Corgi controller at the top and here I have this checkbox stick to slopes uh, which I really want to check if I have a layout that looks like this. If I uncheck it and press play again I'll get this behavior which is fine you know for all the types of games but really to each his own so now you have a choice. The last thing I want to show you today uh, is in the retro copter scene. So, um, and I'm going to show you how you can have more than one weapon equipped at once. So previously, uh, my retro copter would look like this, and it would shoot like this uh, using the retro copter gun, which shoots in these three directions. If I wanted previously, uh, before version 5.1, if I wanted it to have more than one weapon, I would use an inventory and switch manually from one weapon to the other using the same input to shoot my weapon A and weapon B. Um, 5.1 introduces a new ability called secondary character handle secondary weapon which as you can see looks a lot like character handle weapon. So this was the old one as you can see it has an initial weapon called retro copter gun that's the one that shoots in three directions. And um, I'm going to put another weapon on my secondary weapon slot here. So I'm going to take, uh, I don't know, the, um, the shotgun. These weapons can have visuals attached to them. So uh, if I press play, you'll see that, yeah, my, my shotgun is visible. Of course, I could decide to hide it. Uh, I'm not sure a giant shotgun and a copter is such a good idea. But the cool thing is that now if I press my primary attack, I get, as usual, you know, um, the copter gun. And if I press my secondary attack button, I get the shotgun, which means that I can have both equipped at the same time. And that's really cool. Uh, if you decide that for some reason your game needs three or four or five um, weapons at once, well, you can create them. I didn't because I don't want to turn the thing into a big, uh, a big mess, but it's extremely simple to do. And I'm going to show you how. So uh, if I open my ability in Visual Studio, uh, what do we have? We have a class that extends character and a weapon. And the only thing that changes is um, it overrides the handle input method and to do so it looks for a different input so character handle weapon would typically look for the shoot button this one looks for the secondary shoot button and all you have to do is override that to look for different inputs so maybe a third shoot button fourth shoot button that kind of stuff that you can you just have to to add and that way you'll have an infinity of all right, that's all I had to show you today. I hope you like this new version, 5.1, and I'll see you next time. Bye.